What's up everyone, it's me again, and today we are working on part 5 of our documentary of my Seagrave FDNY fire truck. Um, so, our to-do list right now is to redo the lights here. I think those are good right now. <clears throat> uh, redo the lights and start work on the doors of the cab. Because I think this model will really start to take shape once we get those doors on. So I'm pretty excited to get that going. I'm not excited to do the front wheels because those back wheels were pain in the butt as they were. Yeah, we'll just see. Alright, so. Uh, that's what I thought. Alright, we'll just be happy with that. Alright. So, first order of business is to go through and delete all of these lights. Also, I want to make a mention real quick. Uh, in this video, I will be trying a 30 minute long video to see how you guys like it. Uh, this will be a test, and be sure to let me know what you guys think, because that will help in the end when we need to uh, figure out you know what exactly we're gonna do alright so let's come back here what we'll do is we'll do these lights first and then we will uh, what is it? We'll, we'll uh, use those same lights as a source on the rest of the model. So basically, we're going to simplify that original mo model or the original mesh down. And how we're going to do that? We're going to go into unhide all because we're going to need this. And then we're going to hide unselected. Uh, one thing you're going to have to note, that when I made these shadow boxes here, it didn't quite match up right. So everything is slightly eyeballed in terms of like distance, but everything can be scaled down to fit later on when we need to. So the first order of business is to make that new mesh. And how we do that is we basically just use a bunch of boxes. I mean... It really is that simple. Now I'm also going to move this into here. That way it's behind the shadow box and we can actually see what we're doing. So, I'm wondering, should we use that to base it off? Yeah, we will. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we will. That looks about fine. Alright. So I'm just going to move everything down. Thank you for the views, guys, on these videos, by the way. Um, really appreciate it if you watch these, especially if you watch them all the way through. Um, so, convert to edible poly. If you haven't been keeping up, I am going to use the term edible poly. And I am aware that edible is meaning you can eat something. Uh, guys, I'm not the best at pronouncing certain words. I, I got something weird where I slur a bunch of words where they just kind of like come out uh, one way when I want them to come out a different way. So that's just something you're going to have to deal with. I understand if it bothers you. It's, it bothers me sometimes. So, I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, but, that's just how it's going to have to be right now. Oh, boy. Let's take a look, see, at the real one. And you will have to forgive me, it's late at night right now. And, I kind of need to get... I want to get this done before I go to bed. Uh, 
Let's see here. Engine 74. Uh, one thing has been brought to my attention. Um, so I am understanding that everything I've done so far. Ooh, you know, I might actually also redo these back rooms, but that we'll do that later. But I, it's been brought to my attention by myself that this is a collaboration of multiple models. So this is not based off of one single model, but uh, a bunch of different ones. And I realize that's going to throw a dent in some of my plans, because I don't know what to number this. So please uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think I should uh, name this or number this as because I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think about that so uh, yeah let me know because I think that would be nice to finally get this one a number right all right. Very realistic. And we're just using this to distance it. So it's not going to be anything interesting. Again, for those of you who might be new to watching these, uh modeling is not the quickest thing cuz you do have to do a lot of mouse movements. And a lot of the times it doesn't go very quickly. And if you have been keeping up with the videos, you probably can tell that in four parts we got some pretty substantial progress made. Um... Yeah. You're going to notice not a lot's going to get done very quickly. Uh, people are texting me. Give me a second. Kinda got to respond to people. Woo! All right, so this is just gonna be the little metal frame that goes around it. And by the looks of it, I'm gonna end up bringing this piece out. So uh, we're gonna actually take a break from this real quick. I'm gonna delete that tire rim thing. And we're going to come over here, and I need to select the outer edges of this. And we are going to manipulate these outer edges. Just simply extend them out slightly. And the reason we're doing this is just so we can get a general idea of what we are doing. So, yeah, that rim piece just needs to come out ever so slightly on that. Because on that piece, it needs to be about right there. It looks like. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure on 
I should really do that. Let's see if we can find any other good pictures here. There's a lot of time finding good, decent pictures of certain parts really does help you distance and eyeball certain information pretty well, so we're gonna do that here. So we're gonna zoom in. Alright, that looks about right. And we'll just call it good, like that. And then the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to line it up using this. Because I understand that this will probably be slightly more accurate way of getting that out. So, we're going to go to this picture here, because this has a pretty good picture of the piece we're going to model. Um, so, by the looks of it, it could be kind of scaled down just slightly. Or not. Never mind. I do think that the edges can be brought out to be a tiny bit wider, though. It's about right there. Looks about right. And then we can extrude that out just a tiny bit. Not wrong one. And you're going to have to really forgive me here because <clears throat> I'm pretty worn out right now. Had a very busy day today. I'm just going to try and get this video cracked out to you. Alright, yeah. It's about right there. got to do it. And then... We're gonna set our snaps, or not our snaps, see I'm out of it today, our pivot point, that way everything is aligned correctly, and we're going to copy, clone, and then we'll bring this piece out here. And this is gonna help us tremendously when we get into this next part. So now what we have to do here is actually delete that because I'm just going to use this as a reference piece. Okay, we're going to go off of this now. And according to the way this is all kind of laid out here, you see it kind of comes down inward a little bit. So we are going to simulate that. But instead... Turn it that because from the looks of this so when that comes around it's got like a wider edge on the outside so left for us to do is deselect that one, reselect that one, and chamfer these edges. So 
by doing this we will actually be able to lower the amount of polygons not by a whole bunch but a, a decent amount and I want these ones to be pretty detailed so we can raise the chamfer point up to about four four iterations I think ought to do it I'm thinking. About one point two, maybe. Yeah, it's not it's not too big of a curve on it. It's just about just about there. then we can always go back and redo it if we have to which is something I don't want to really do but if we have to and you're wondering why am I doing this well there's a good reason for it I'm going to do my object snaps do 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 and we're gonna fix this pivot so it's like that. And then we're going to come over and we're going to fuse it to this one. Now, ah, dang it. Just like that. That way, that face is like that. And then we can go through and I'm going to move this in about to there on the model and then I'm gonna actually come here we're gonna just uh, do that to it and now we will go to the edges here and hopefully we can actually get them to match up the way that they're matched up there. So we set about 1.2 just like that. And then if I start doing it like that, we get an entirely jacked up model. But if we do it like that, let us see how well that's going to work. Alrighty. What if we turn off edged faces? I want to kind of see how that's going to work out. And this is, where are we on the recording time? 18 minutes already. See, you, we don't make a whole lot of progress, especially when I'm tired. I ain't doing much. Yeah. I'm trying to think what we can do here. That would round it off the way we want it to be. Can I add iterations to it and still have it match up okay? I'm not thinking so. I'm thinking just four four iterations and then we'll do that and then what we can do here is just chamfer that down. There. So we'll lower Yeah, I'm not seeing that working very well. This is just one of those moments now where we need 
to see how well this is going to match up. So we're going to go into our render setup and we're going to render this. And what's going to probably end up happening here is when we get to 30 minutes, whatever progress we have done, I will probably go and finish that up before I start recording the next part. And we'll we'll just see how this all goes from here. Because I'm honestly not sure how it's all going to really work out in the end, but hopefully it's not going to be too, too bad. Now if I could get that to just be a little more bulbous. Yeah, I think that would work. Just a little bit better. So Alright, so we're about here again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut. And this isn't a normal cut. This is a tool that I that I'll use to add a face. And this is kind of where edge faces will come in handy. All right, click, and then I like to edit these using vertices. That, that way I can just kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. So, vertices and your object snap tool. That is what will be very, 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 very helpful in lining all of these up. Because what our goal is going to now be is using these vertices here, we're going to actually make the, ah jeez, we're going to make this edge just come out a little bit. I think we'll just use these these edges here to do that though. That way that just that part just kind of is going to stick out a little bit more than the rest of them. And then we will set these all up for chamfering. And I didn't do that quite right. Is it that one that I want? Yeah. Let's just do it like that. What happens if I select that middle one? Oh, lots of stuff happened. So, four iterations. That's where we want it. And then I'll get it all lined up with that piece after the fact. So now we'll just go with our vertices and we'll see what we can do to edit these. So they just match up a little bit better with their assigned piece here. A lot of the time, like, I'm doing this all kind of like off the top of my head right now. 
I have no prior experience telling me this is what you need to do to this to make this look right. I don't have any of that right now. All I have is like, oh, hey, you know, this would look right to do, so I'll do that instead. You know, it's not something, sometimes you have to improvise, sometimes you just have to use some common sense, and a lot of the times I don't have that common sense that I'm talking about. So, again, you'll hear me say this a lot, it is what it is, guys. There's not a whole lot you can do. Just do your best. I sound like one of those motivational posters you see in school. Made a funny guys laugh at me. Ha ha ha. I made a. Jeez, whiz. why am I so tired? It's only 11:35. I was up to like. 1.30 last night, and I know you all been up till 4, but, you know, that's pretty late for me. And I've been trying to limit how long I stay up at night. So I'll probably be up till about 1. 1 o'clock is my limit, I think, tonight that I'm going to be modeling, because I'm just worn out. And I think my main goal today is just going to be getting parts edited, 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 and fixed up. Gonna make it all look right. Yeah, hopefully that looks a little more to the prototype. Yeah, you know, honestly, from what we what we started out with, that does look ten times better. And we'll just do a quick render and just make sure everything's coming out the way we want it to be. Again, this is a very important tool that you guys should use. So, I think while while I'm about doing this, I will give you my render settings that I use. So, I might as well go over how to make a render. While I'm doing this. So yeah, we got about three minutes here. I... Are we even recording? Yeah, we. That was weird. Kind of stopped for a second. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. weird. So, uh, your general render settings that I use, um, I'll go to output size and I'll just go to custom and mine is about 1331 by 830. Uh, image aspect, I don't know what that's always set to, but that's 1400, or that's like 1.443. Uh, atmospherics, effects, displacement, those are all on. Uh, then you need to go to your ray tracer settings and there's it advanced lighting. Advanced lighting, uh, select advanced lighting, light tracer. That's what you want. And you can leave all those. Uh, you can leave all those to like minimum or what they are right now. So, it's for advanced lighting, I don't know, or ray tracers. I have no idea what you got to do with that. But those are my settings. And then also, I suggest uh, you can put a skylight out. Mine's over there. It doesn't matter where you put it. Just, I put it there. So that's there, you know. And that's what kind of gives you the lighting effect that's pretty nice. Oh, dang wrong thing. Alright, here's the render of the piece. Look at that. Looks great. Looks really awesome. And with a little bit of texturing we can make that look a lot rounder. So. Now that we have this done, we are going to go through. We're going to edit it as a mesh. 
and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach that. Now that that's attached, I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna go into my wireframe so I can do this a little bit better. Not hidden line, wireframe. We're gonna select these faces that aren't being shown, and we're simply gonna delete them. There we go. That way we don't have a whole bunch of polygons. Now I'm going to affect the pivot and I'm going to adjust this pivot point actually so that it lines up with the end of this piece. Yeah, like that. Because now, when I go to adjust this, I can actually get it flush, which is what we want here. So, we'll clone this, and we'll rotate it around to 180, and then... We'll come over here and we will set this to where we want it to be. So now we're we're kind of on a roll here. I'm going to finish this up and then I'll get part 6 going uh when we do something else here cuz basically all I'm going to do is be lining all these lights up back where they were before we deleted the originals. Um so I'm going to end the video here and start uploading it. I'm sorry not a whole but lot happened in this uh episode, but hopefully soon things will get a lot better. So Stay tuned.